Hi, in this segment, I'm going to present the solution uh, to problem number five, okay? Uh, which is about uh, applying one-time pad idea to the SIFT cipher algorithm. So more precisely, the plain text is either Y or N, you can imagine yes or no. And the key space is A through Z, okay? So that means there are 26 possible keys and the plain text is either yes or no. So when Alice wants to send message to Bob, she will uh, have to agree upon the key K, which could be either A through Z upfront. And then she takes her message, which can be either Y or N. She applies the SIF cipher algorithm, which we talked about in other videos. And then she sends that resulting cipher text to Bob. Since Bob also knows the same key, he will apply the decryption part of the SIF cipher algorithm to recover the message. Okay. The question is, uh, is this perfectly secure from a one-time one -time pad perspective? Meaning if the key is randomly chosen and used only once, can we prove or disprove that the system is, um, for, is one time, is a secure from one time, um, one time pad perspective, meaning perfectly secure. Okay. This is a Shannon's um, idea of uh, one time, um, Shannon's idea of perfect secrecy that we are going to instantiate for SIF cipher algorithms, okay? All right, so I, I wanted to draw a matrix to get this idea across first. Okay, so simple matrix. What I'm going to do is uh, create a simple table, right, uh, as follows. The message itself is made of only either yes or no, right? So message is just either yes or no. Okay, there are two columns for that. The cipher text, um, to generate the cipher text, we have to apply the SIFT cipher algorithm. In our case, we are allowed to use keys from K equal to uh, A all the way through Z. Okay. All right. All the way through key equal to Z. All right. We don't differentiate between small A and the capital A or something like that. There's no difference between uppercase and small case, lowercase in our um, context. All right, so here is the matrix that I was talking about. So this is the message space. Uh, message space is made of yes or no. This is the key space. So uh, now we can generate this table with basically uh, using the SIF cipher algorithm. So this is easy, right? When key K is A, we usually encode A to be zero, um, Z to be 25, right? So SIF cipher algorithm is basically add, add the value of uh, y, which, which is um, zero through, well, um, what is y? y must be 24, right? Because we are starting from zero. So we take y, 24, add it with zero. So 24 mod 26 doesn't change. So we'll have 24, okay? Which means we still get y, all right? So this is basically the SIF cipher algorithm. What about uh, when key, key is b? what will happen? B is nothing but one, right? We encode B as one. Uh, so Y will become Z because we sift by one position. Okay, this is the standard sift cipher. So I'm not going to repeat that. Please watch the sift cipher video. Okay, so I'm going to call generate the key space, uh, can generate the cipher space uh, for message uh, Y and we we pass 26, meaning there are 26 possible keys. That's the, the size of the key space. And we want to generate all possible ciphertexts now. So as we can see, the first column of the matrix is automatically generated now for us. Y, Z, A, B, C, and all of those. Uh, let's do the same for another message, which is N, right? Okay. And these are the possible ciphertexts when we uh, encrypt n using different keys. Okay, key can be either 0, 1 through all the way to 25. Okay. What is interesting to note is that uh, uh, I have already checked it. Each of the uh, ciphertext characters is unique. There is no duplication whatsoever. Further, furthermore, if you um, read from A through Z, you will see all of the characters are present here. Okay, we can confirm it. Um, let me call this thing for a moment and uh, print the length, okay? I think that's a way, let me do this. Let's say this is the ciphertext space, right? Cipher space. 
and I'm going to print the length of the cyberspace. So 26 characters, as I said, um, and uh, all of the characters are unique, okay? So what it means is that, now let's get back to the whiteboard. What it means is that th there are no duplicates whatsoever within a particular column. So all of the entries in a column are unique, okay? And of course, um, all of the, there cannot be a row which has the same entry uh, more than once because we are taking a particular key and we are adding it with either yes or no. So uh, each of the, um, each of the elements in a row uh, is, is unique, okay? The, it cannot uh, be the same with the other element in the same row, okay? That must give us some confidence that this could be um, a perfectly secure uh, system from one time pad perspective. We choose random key K and uh, we can prove now that, remember the definition of um, perfect secrecy is that if you choose a message M, right? M, M, I'm just going to denote it by small M, which is basically either Y or N. And you are observing some ciphertext C to be C. Okay, we are asking this probability. What is, is this equal to the probability that M equal to M? What it means is that observing the ciphertext doesn't give you any advantage about the probability of the plain text. So you don't learn anything about the plain text from the ciphertext. That's the definition of this uh, one-time pad idea, okay? But we need to prove this for our encryption algorithm that we just talked about. Okay, how do we do that? So what I'm going to do is apply bias theorem, which we talked about in other video. So what is this bias theorem telling us? Bias theorem is telling us that if uh, I want to compute the probability that message M is equal to M, remember M is either Y or N, uh, given that the ciphertext C is equal to C, C could be either A, B, C, and all the way through uh, Z. What is this probability? This probability is nothing but the probability that the ciphertext is uh, C, uh, given the message uh, being M, right? Times the message, uh, uh, times the probability that the message is M, give it, divided by uh, probability that uh, ciphertext is C. Okay, this is basically the uh, definition that we get straight from Bayes theorem, okay? But we need to compute, uh, we need to compute all these components and then show that this is this this equation one is true. Okay, for all possible message M and all possible ciphertext, we need to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is just to show you a simple example, and you can easily generalize it. Suppose I I pick uh, my message to be uh, M, uh, which is say uh, a message can be either yes or no. Right? Let's let's take a simple example message to be Y. Okay, so. Uh, what I'm going to compute is, what is the probability that my um, message is equal to Y, right? Given that, say I'm going to pick a particular ciphertext, a ciphertext Z is equal to Z, C is equal to Z. So I'm going to compute only this probability, just as an example. Well, okay, we can easily compute now uh, the components we need. What is the probability that is, uh, we need to this, this one, right? That means what is the probability that the ciphertext is uh, Z, okay? We need to compute this probability. What is the probability that the ciphertext is Z? Uh, ciphertext Z can occur, uh, what are the ways ciphertext Z can occur? It can occur um, because the key is uh, uh, B, right? And the message is Y. Okay, so message has to be Y and key is, um, uh, what is key? Key has to be uh, B, right? That's the only reason, that's, that's, the, that's the case where it should lead us to, to ciphertext being Z. Uh, key is equal to this combination, okay? Key is equal to B. There's another interesting combination, okay? Or, well, R is plus in probability. Message can be N, right? So, okay, so now I don't know what the key is. Okay, message is N and we can have 
n with something now let me check my python program n with something leading to um, z okay so it looks like uh, three six uh, nine 12, yeah, 12. If I add 12, 12 characters, then I get Z, okay? Meaning if I have my key to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, okay? If my key is say M and my message is N, I get my ciphertext to be Z, okay? Now we can compute this probability easily. Uh, what is the probability? These two are independent events, right? Uh, message and key are independent events. So I can just uh, say probability of m equal to y is half. We assumed the each message, each character of our message can equally likely occur, which may or may not be true in general, but that this in this problem, we assume like that. So the first component is half into, what is the probability that a key is b? There are 26 possible keys. That means it's one over 26. And the, the next part is also the same, one by two times one over 26, okay? Which means we can take one over 26 as common and uh, we get uh, answer is uh, one half plus one half, which is one, uh, because these are the two mutually exclusive probabilities, right? Either yes or no. So we found out the probability for the denominator. As if you pay close attention, um, this denominator that we computed, although it's instantiated for ciphertext C being Z, you can change it for other um, ciphertext as well. There's nothing specific about Z. So you will always get one over 26 for this component, okay? This component is going to be one over 26. All right, that's good. What about the component um, over here? How do we compute this? So here we can do a small trick. So let me show you how to compute the other component. Uh, we need to compute probability that C is equal to uh, C is equal to Z given that M is equal to Y, right? That's the, the reverse component, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll compute now probability of ciphertext being uh, Z uh, given that my message is y, okay. So given that message is y means I just have to pay attention to the first column of my matrix, right? This is the first column of my matrix and um, m is equal to y is basically written here, right? So we need to find, is there any key that can um, take the message m to um, m equal to y to z equal to z. Yes, there is at least one, there is exactly one key. In fact, uh, the key is uh, b. That means um, out of 26 possible keys, there's exactly one key which will do that, which means this is also one by 26, okay? So now if you plug these values inside here to this equation number two, okay? You, your, your numerator has one over 26 divided by, divided, divided by one over 26 that will get canceled out. So this one and this one will get canceled out. What you are left with is say, m equal to m, which is half because we have only two possible messages. So we learned that this component, probability of uh, message m being m, m being any arbitrary message actually, given that c is equal to c is just one half, which is nothing but the, mess, uh, the probability of message being m because there are only two possible messages. So we, Although we didn't do a rigorous proof, we did show that um, this is one time pad, uh, meaning um, this is perfectly secure, okay? Um, if you have message space, is either yes or no, and you randomly pick uh, a key K um, and you apply SIF cipher algorithm, um, th there is no uh, advantage the attacker has by observing the cipher text, he learns nothing about your plain text, okay? So although I proved it with some concrete instance like m equal to y and the z equal to c, um, there's nothing specific about those characters as you have seen, okay? All right, that's basically how you prove these things. Thank you.